woke up in the middle of the night, night. and I noticed that I wanted a curry. So I found up the curry shop, shop. asked for a curry. I'm so going to make a quasi-authentic Jamaican curry. I have um, about 10 chicken thighs here, probably. The lady who taught me how to do this was 16 at the time, and I was 17, and she was from Kingston, Jamaica. Even some of the, the Jamaicans that have tasted it have been quite surprised that a Caucasian Canadian um, is the one who made it. Now, my friend showed me how to do it just by watching her. And then a number of years ago, my sister, who needs a recipe, decided that I needed to standardize this. So this recipe is the work of eight or nine hours of standardizing a recipe for my little sister. So here we have a thighs, which I find are great, and you can actually leave these whole, but I like them to be cut into chunks, and we have um, the bone left in, as the bones add so much flavor to the stew. So here I have a roughly two teaspoons of um, ginger that has been diced, and three to four cloves of garlic. I dice my ginger and my garlic in my food processor and then freeze it. Now here are the assortment of spices as per the recipe. And with these you just, they're great if they're mixed up a little bit, but you're going to mix everything up in the bowl anyways. And this is a couple of um, diced onions. I also run these up in my food processor and uh, they're a little hot at the moment, but we're going to uh, mix it all in so that we can spice up this meat. And I would suggest that you wear a, um, a plastic glove and wear your splints if you have a sore hand. And uh, you're just going to mix this all together and um, make this lovely golden mishmash of um, chicken thighs. You can do it with any parts of the chicken. My friend would do it with the whole leg uh, and she would leave the skin on which would put a lot of fat into the recipe. I'm not against fat, but I prefer to add my own in terms of the, um, of the good olive oil, um, that type of thing. Now this doesn't have to marinate forever, but if you can leave it overnight, it has a much more superior taste. And that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to mix this all up and wrap it, take it out. You just want your flavors to um, mix up really, really well. Now, um, as I say, I'm going to cover this, and um, tomorrow we're going to do prep uh, stove top prep because not everyone has a oh, not a piece of skin. Sorry, not everyone has a um, instant pot, or um, you can do it in the slow cooker as well. But you really want to get the char on the meat before you add water to it to stew it. The char just gives it so much flavor. You can char this, spread it out and char it under the broiler, or uh, do it as we're going to do it in the recipe in the big pot. I'm going to take my lovely glove off, and you see my hand is nice and white still. It does need a washing, but at least it's not golden yellow. So over medium heat, we're going to warm our um, stainless steel pan. It's a good idea to have a, a deep pan for this because uh, there'll be a lot of splatter. You really need to scorch the curry to um, get it to a nice brown color. Next, I'm going to pour in some of that olive oil that I spoke about earlier, so probably about a tablespoon or two. We really need things to sizzle in this. Um, once it warms for a little bit, I'm going to add a little drip of water just to see if it's um, at the right temperature. We really want it hot, but we don't want the heat up so high that everything will burn right off the bat. Here is the cold curry chicken from the fridge. And uh, this is going to make a really delicious um, curry chicken. I'm just drizzling a few drops of water from my hand here, just to see when it spatters. And at that point, when it's really spattering, we can put our chicken in. I just turned the heat for the pot up to high because 
by throwing it all in like that, there's more of a stewing effect going on. So um, I put it up over high heat, and once it starts to char, I'm going to turn it down again. So this is smelling phenomenal, even at this point. When it gets to this point where it's really simmering or boiling, as I say, I turn the heat back up to a higher temperature just to get it seared more. And, uh, and at this point, you want to do a little more uh, stirring so that the curry and the onions will get somewhat charred on the bottom, especially, because that's where deglazing the pan is going to give you all the wonderful flavors. So, uh, let's see here. All of the spices are getting thick, or the sauce, I should say, is getting thick in the bottom, and I think you can probably see how that has stuck to the bottom of my pan. And at this point, I'm going to um, lower the heat, let it finish um, browning a little bit while the heat lowers itself to where it's going to stew. So I put it back down to medium, and my backdrops are probably melting from the heat here, even though they're as far away from the heat as possible. Uh, there we go. And uh, I'll let it go for another minute or two, keep stirring, and then I'm going to add um, couple cups of water to it. This is um, a spaghetti jar that has the measurements on it. I'm going to add uh, the 16 ounces of water to this, roughly, to cover it. And this is going to give us a wonderful curry sauce. And the point is to let it simmer down to about half of what it is so that we have some gravy to pour over our rice or whatever we want to eat our curry with. So this is going to simmer for probably about 40 minutes and um, we'll be back to check it occasionally. This is what it looks like with the water over it. And I'm going to add the coconut milk at the end because we don't want it to um, separate. So this is what it looks like after 45 minutes. You see the sauce is getting thicker. Well, kind of. It tastes really great on rice or over cauliflower if you're following keto. Now, at this point, you will taste it for um, salt and pepper. And if it doesn't have enough kick, you can add a little bit more of your hot chilies or uh, a, little more, um, a little more cumin. I think I'd probably up the amount of cumin by another half teaspoon and um, if you simmer this a little longer the meat will get a little softer um, and then in about 15 minutes I'm going to add the coconut milk. So here is Gaston ready to dig in and this is my curried chicken stew a la Jamaican style. A special thanks to my old friend Blondel Baden for showing me how to make this so many years ago. Enjoy. Jamaica. We will raft you into the sunset. What's old is what's new. We'll match you at cricket. We want you to join us. We'll intoxicate you with hibiscus. We made it.